Hey guys, it's me again. I thought I'd show you guys the logic behind the puzzle that I presented to you earlier. Now most of you will know it by the name, the autism test, but that name actually has absolutely nothing to do with autism. The name, I'm, I imagine, was used as a joke uh, by self-described Asperger's um, kids. <laughs> I shouldn't say kids, they were adults. Uh, but uh, the point, though, was that the name has nothing to do with it. If I use it, it's mostly because most people who will look for an understanding of this puzzle are probably going to know it by that name. Uh, if I just use the original, the historical name, which is the five-room puzzle, most people would probably not find it. Now, if you're really lazy, I will tell you, this puzzle has no solution. Now, for those of you who want to know why, we have to start with a couple of simpler puzzles, and then we'll move back to this one. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we have the Four Bridges, Three Lands puzzle. The point is that we are to cross every bridge exactly once. And in doing so, of course, we're also going to touch all three lands. We can go this way. We can go this way, uh, we can go that way, so it's got a bunch of solutions, actually not near infinite, but it's got a bunch, okay. So, but when we try to apply the same logic to the more historical Bridges of Konigsberg problem, well, suddenly we are stuck with the fact that this thing, hard as we try, we'll never find a solution that crosses all seven bridges. At most, we will cross six. And you might want to try all kinds of different ways and be like, oh, no, we'll do it this way. No, do, that, do it that way. Well, guess what? You're, al you're always almost only going to get six. The point is, try it, and you're going to notice that. If you think there's a solution, you're probably breaking a rule. <laughs> so, why? Why doesn't it work? Well, in the 1760s, Leonard Euler figured this out using an ingenious technique, which would later expand into the discipline that we call graph theory. Leonard Euler was just an amazing mathematician. The guy just is, is one of my heroes. Um, and we want to look at it in the most simplified way in order to understand. And to do that, make it more interesting. Okay, so we'll make each land mass have a purple point. And the point we're going to call it a vertex. Vertex, same, uh, same name as we use at, you know, on the corners of a polygon, okay? And the paths that connect between them are going to be edges, just like the edges of a polygon, okay? So we have vertices and edges, okay? And as you can see, every path has its vertex and edge. Got it? Okay. Now, let's go ahead and look at what we have. And here's what, what, what Euler figured out that was ingenious, by the way. He figured out that whenever you begin your draw, your path will have, of course, it will have one edge, wherever you begin. Wherever, whenever, though, you cross through a vertex, you will have two edges, the one that goes in and the one that goes out. Well, actually, this would be like an arrow. So, if you're going through a point or through a, ver through a vertex, you're going to have two. If you begin from a vertex, you have one. And if you think about that, think about that for a few seconds. That leads us to the natural conclusion that he came down with, which is an Eulerian path. And this is the path that successfully travels down every edge is a path 
that can only happen if all our vertices are even or only two vertices are odd. Okay, Why only two? Well, that's because our beginning and our ending point can be odd, and that's all. We can never have, if we have more than two odd vertices, that by its nature must mean that we have another loose edge. We can't have that if we have a single path. Remember that a line has only a beginning and an end. Okay, If we had an extra odd, we would have another. That's not possible. Okay, So, think about that. I know it doesn't sound natural, but if you sit there and think about it in the easiest of examples, it should help. For now, I'm going to move forward and let's go ahead and look at what we were, what this rule says. Okay, and this rule then tells us, well, if we count the number of vertices that are even and odd, it should tell us if the puzzle has a solution. In this case, we have two, we have three, and we have three. And we call this, by the way, the degree. You may as well get used to those mathematical terms because you're going to hear them once, twice, and many, many times. Okay, so this puzzle here has two odds or two vertices of third degree and a vertex of second degree. So we have two odds. As long as we have two odds, we can have solutions. Okay, but here's another important point. And that is just because we can have solutions doesn't mean that we always will have solutions. We still have to work at it. For example, in this puzzle here, you saw that I found solutions, but I can also show you that it will that there are ways in which it will not have a solution. For example, if I go here and here, ah, can't do that. What if I do here and here? Ah, can't do that. If I go here, here, and here, once again, no solution. Anything I do, because when I start from an even, remember that this was the even node, or the even vertex. If I start from an even vertex, every other vertex must be even. And that's a natural consequence of these two rules. Once again, I know it doesn't sound natural. You have to sit down and think about it yourself. I can't give you everything. You should think about it. I gave you the simplest puzzle of this, and if you think about it, that should make sense. So really, sit down and think about it. Pause the video. Think about it. Write it on paper. Don't just follow this blindly, because that's just you're not going to get the understanding just doing that. Now, let's go ahead and move up then. And we'll apply that same rule to the more puzzling bridges of Konigsberg. Okay. In this case, once again, let's go ahead and draw our vertices and our edges. And in this case, we're going to cross like that. In this case, we're going to cross like that. across like that, like that, like that, like that, like that. And what do we have? Well, let's go ahead and look. This has three. That's odd. This has five. That's odd. This has three. That's odd. And this has three. So how many odds do we have? We have four. But as long as we have more than two, that can never give us a solution. But here's a cool thing. If on this puzzle we added another bridge here so that we could do that, we had three bridges here at the bottom or at the top, doesn't matter. The point though is, if we did that, we would add an extra path here. Okay, this would change to six. 
and this would change to 4. All of a sudden, we have two odds and two evens. This puzzle with an extra bridge would be solvable. Try it and you'll see. Now, let's move on to the five room puzzle. In this case, we do exactly the same thing. We go ahead and draw our vertices. Our vertex outside is just a big ring. You can draw it as a dot, but it really complicates everything. It's the same thing. It's just you know that this kind of represents a dot. Okay. And then each room is a vertex. Each path to the doors is an edge. And here. So, what are we left with? Our, our edges and our vertices. And in this case, we can see that we have five, 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 four, four. So we have nine on the outside. So how many odds do we have? We have four odds. Bad. We will not get a solution. We have too many odds. We can remember, remember what I said in the beginning. We must have a maximum of two odds. And remember why I said that, because that indicates the beginning and the end points. Your beginning will be odd. Your end will be odd. Okay. So this has no solution. But if you, if you remember what I said, how we can make the bridges of Konigsberg solvable, we can do exactly the same thing to this puzzle. You see, if in this case, we added an extra doorway between these two rooms, like that, well, then we would have six and six. And we would have odd here and odd there. And in this case, our puzzle would be solvable. This would be the equivalent of adding an extra door here and in this case as I said we would be able to solve this puzzle okay unlike all the others this one does have a solution I'll leave it to you to try it but you'll notice mathematically it's telling us yes it's not a guarantee it's not like I said remember what I said about this puzzle here which is if you do it the wrong way and I gave you the logic. Think about why it doesn't solve when we start here. Yet, it does solve when we start from here or from here. That same logic will apply to this puzzle. Okay, guys. I hope that was enlightening to you. And once again, everything that I walked you through is not enough to get you to understand. You guys really have to take notes while you're doing this. If you're not taking notes, and I know a lot of people go to see YouTube videos trying to be passive, but that's just about as useful as uh, watching TV. And sit down, think about what I told you. Think about what it means to have an Eulerian path. Think about why you can begin from one point, why coming in and out of points makes them even and why it makes them odd. As a matter of fact, you should now be ready to solve a slightly more complex version of this puzzle, but this one has two rules. One is that each vertex can only be visited a single time, and the ending point must be the same as the starting point. So for example, in this case, we cross only a single time, like that, and if we only wanted to cross the outside, that's easy. Our ending point would be our starting point if we did that. Now, I didn't solve the puzzle because there's all these others in the middle, but I think you get the point. So, can you solve it? It does have a solution. It's a very famous puzzle. It's about 160 years old. Well, until next time, if you have any questions or anything else, let me know.
and especially if I made any mistakes, because um, I'm not as good as my math guy, but hopefully I uh, did a good job there, okay? Well, thanks again, guys, and take care.